Hi guys, um, back to learning new theories and we're going to be looking at George Gerbner this week. There he is, that happy looking fellow. Um, and his theory is called Cultivation Theory. Uh, it's relatively simple to get your head around and it's pretty, pretty relevant to what's going on today. So um, very interesting, I think you will uh, get something out of this, it won't take too long. Uh, but this week's task, this week's work, is contained within this uh, PowerPoint. So, um, yeah, the, the activity that I want you to do is in the PowerPoint. You will see when we get to it. Uh, but check the Word document as well that's included. Okay, uh, let's go. So, cultivation theory. What this basically says is the media generally tends to repeat the same representations of people and issues over and over. So it repeats the way that it represents people and issues. This repetition can inform the way the public think of these people or issues. It leads to dominant ideologies. So basically, if the media decides to represent a particular type of person, a group of people, as scary and dangerous, let's say how, um, um, let's say black youths in America were represented in the sort of 1980s and 90s with gangster rap and some of the movies that showed The Hood, straight out of Compton, you know, themes like that. Boys in the Hood, the film I meant. Um, if you look at that, now if that image, is, that image was very popular in the early 90s, the idea of the sort of black gangster um, that connected with sort of gangster rap were very, very prevalent. And in fact, it would have informed the opinion of the people around the world, thinking, oh, everybody in America who lives in you know, Compton or South Central is going to be like that. Or maybe even every black American is going to be like that. Or possibly even every black person is going to be a bit like that. So it would have affected the way people saw black people in that way. Now, this can, also, this can be seen in a number of different ways. Um, about or oh, about five years ago, maybe longer, um, a few different newspapers started to refer to teenagers as hoodies, and referring to them as sort of scary individuals. Now that was repeated and repeated, and again, um, the public, sort of middle-aged public, started to think that a lot of teenagers were criminals, and the hood signified that in some way. So kind of interesting. Look, for example, um, refugees. So if you look at some of the ways that refugees have been represented in the media and campaigns surrounding Brexit, you'll see some repetition of image here. You'll see uh, ways that the refugees have been described and photographed, and it will certainly cultivate a public opinion on them. Uh, maybe this led to some of the votes for a pro-Brexit, who knows. Uh, now, we're going to look at a couple of images. What I want you to do is I want you to think of semiotics, and I want you to think how to analyse some of these images and how it might have affected the representation of refugees. So here is a poster used for um, the Brexit party. You've got uh, Nigel Farage there standing in front looking ominous. Um, but if you look at the picture, um, breaking point in red. So we've got red, first of all. Um, that, you know, what does that signify? Danger, scary. Um, we've got a queue of people and what can we see with these about these people? What can we, what, you know, what do we see of them? Well, first of all, the queue seems to be stretching outside of the frame, um, with a very relatively shallow depth of field. Uh, what this means is we can't see how many people are there. Now, there might not be many more than is shown in the picture, but it implies it's a never-ending stream. So it implies there's just an endless queue of people that are coming in. Let's look at the people as well. First of all, they all appear to be males. Um, so sort of slightly threatening maybe. It's not the same as seeing, I mean there's a couple of children there, but mainly all grown men, no women. It would be different if it was a, a, lot, a big line of you know attractive looking women coming in. Uh, I think it would be a slightly different message. But here it looks like a slightly sort of, slightly poor group of, um, I would say brown skinned people. Um, what else can we say about them? I mean, there's not much detail put on them. Um, they seem to... You can't really make any eye contact with them, so it doesn't look like they've got any eyes, just black holes. It makes them look very kind of unhuman, inhuman. 
Um, they say that the, uh, the eyes are the windows to the soul, and here we really can't see their eyes, they're just sort of black, black holes um, in this swarm of people that seems to go on forever. So the message here is that there's endless amounts, they're sort of dirty, unwashed, they look aggressive, you know, they're not really human, all these things. Let's see if that image is repeated anywhere else. Well, by God, yes it is. Look at this, the Daily Express and Daily Mirror, two very trashy newspapers. So the first one here we see, uh, and this is just two of dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of headlines I came across from all different newspapers. Uh, but the Daily Express is saying, inside the pictures that prove, dot, 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 immigrants swarm to Britain. Very loaded language. On the Daily Mail we've got, um, look at this, the... The sensationalist over at the top. Why we all fear dentists and natural born killers. Bizarre bit of intertextuality there. Natural born killers as a film. Anyway, ignore that. Uh, moving on. As police sees stowaway immigrants across south, across south, Cameron is attacked for liking them to insects. And then the headline there is um, the swarm on our streets. So I mean, it could be that. The Daily Mail is actually criticising, or it's not It's not really criticising Cameron, but it's saying that Cameron has been criticised for, um, or attacked for liking them to insects. But it, it, you know, it uses the word insects there in the title. On the page we've got insects, we've got swarm, swarm in both um, newspapers, plus we've got stories of the police, so it's like criminal, police are here. Um, so yeah, you can see how a repetition of these sort of images of of refugees being the great unwashed, there's hundreds of them, they're aggressive, they're inhuman, they're in fact they're like insects, they swarm to this country. All of that sort of, you know, they're, they're criminal, they're involved with the police, all of that informs our opinion. So think about today, for instance, think about how this could be used today. What messages do we see in the media that's repeated and repeated, and how does it change the way that we see? Think, see, see an issue. Think how the pandemic has been covered by the media. Um, this is very interesting. It's worth looking at because, uh, you know, this is a major event being covered by the media and we are media students. Think about how many images we have been shown and the, and the new way of living that we all had to adopt. We've adopted this new way of living almost overnight. Um, and we have accepted things to be factual, absolutely truthful, uh, because of the repetition of the images. So uh, at the start of the year, we were told masks didn't help they weren't they didn't protect you uh, but now um, the message very strongly is masks do protect you and protect others and should be worn and if you ask the general public I think the, the opinion is that you know masks definitely do what we're told so we have you know as a nation we've u-turned our opinion on that because of the media how much has cultivation theory assisted this do you think well you know possibly quite a lot the repetition of images means that we accept that message a lot more how do we use it? Well, we apply it where relevant in the exam answers, uh, usually mentioning his name and the, in the correct place and saying how a theory can be applied will be enough. So just in the same way that other theorists, we use them, you know, uh, we, you know, we say stuff like this. This is an example of the theory discussed by George Gerbner in his cultivation theory, something like that. That's quite badly worded, but you might, um, wherever you think it's relevant, you might explain you know, analyse the text, and then you might have a line just linking it to George Gerbner. Uh, think, for example, of the dominant representations of Africa in many of the charity adverts that we've looked at. What does cultivation, uh, what response does this cultivate in the audience? What does Water Aid, Claudia Sings, the one that we, we're, the, the close text that we're studying, um, how does this advert try to readdress this? So think, for instance, how. Um, through charity adverts, the, the more dominant traditional ones we looked at, you know, the one with Dermot O'Leary and stuff like that, and he has no choice, the one with um, John Sim. Um, how, how are Africans representing that? They tend to be victims, they tend to be, um, you know, in need of charity, charity cases, um, almost generating our sympathy. Well, the repetition of that image has certainly meant that it's it's you know that is very believable and that is how many people will view Africa. Uh, in fact, uh, when I was young, um, the country that Comet Relief used to campaign for a lot was Ethiopia, um, 
and we used to see these images of Ethiopians all over the telly. And when we go to LA every year, um, our, one of our friends says to us, oh, you must come to Little Ethiopia and go to one of the restaurants there. And I always think that's very strange because in my mind, when I think Ethiopia, I think starvation and famine, and then they've got restaurants in the trendy part of LA. Well, it's, you know, I guess times have changed, and also maybe that image that was, you know, that has so strongly lodged in my mind um, isn't true anymore, or possibly wasn't entirely true at the time. Who knows? Well, here's somebody who knows, or certainly has an opinion. So this is what I want you to do for this week's task. Uh, first of all, I'd like you just to write a very brief paragraph explaining what George Gerbner's theory is. Uh, and then I'd like you to watch this video below. It's something we've talked about in class. Um, it links in with water aid a little bit, and it, it certainly links in with cultivation theory. Um, but it's that, that TED talk that I talked to, you, talked to you about, about the woman for Africa who says how actually Africa is a very rich country and it's... Um, a lie perpetuated by the charity adverts that they are in need of charity. It's very, very interesting. Uh, certainly makes you think in a different way. And uh, what I want you to do is pre please write um, a brief paragraph explaining uh, Mal Malance, that's her name, I guess, Malance Bart Williams' view uh, on Africa and how George Gerbner's theory can be applied. So basically, a very, very brief introduction about what George Gerbner's theory is, and then a very brief paragraph about this video that you're about to watch, what it basically says, and how you think cultivation theory has helped perpetuate maybe this this lie, this myth. Um, I want you to write it up uh, in this hour and submit it in the usual way. So submit it to Teams. Uh, there's the link below. Hopefully that works. If it doesn't work, I've got the uh, the you can search the title that I've written under the link there. So it's change your channel, Malance Bart Williams. TEDx Berlin Salon. So there you go. Uh, it's very, very interesting and hopefully it'll make you think a little bit more about how images uh, and representations are cultivated. So thank you very much. Um, I hope you got something out of that and enjoyed it. Uh, see you next week. There's a picture of Bart Man, just because I like Bart. He's cool. Uh, so there you go. Watch it, dude. He's saying, how threatening. Um, thanks a lot, guys. Um, I hope you find this task not too hard and you get something out of it and think how we can apply this to water aid and all sorts of texts we look at this year. Thanks a lot. Bye.